Hello and welcome to my kitchen. My name is Roy. I am a home cook and amateur baker and I am here on this channel sharing recipes that have helped me to lose over 125 pounds, whether those recipes are mine or someone else's. Now today I'm going to be doing a back to basics tutorial and because of the holiday season coming up quickly approaching the fall season, the Christmas season, I figured it might be a good idea to show you how to prepare some of the holiday spice blends that you may need this season. So there are going to be four spice blends. I'm going to be doing one savory, which is a poultry seasoning. And then I will be doing three of it on the sweeter side, but that can also be used for savory things. I'm going to be doing pumpkin pie spice, apple pie spice, and gingerbread spice. But first of all, why don't I bring you over and show you my spice collection. Okay guys, I'm going to be showing you my rather large spice collection here. And they are all alphabetized except for these bigger jars, which are the ones I use most frequently. And down below. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is my small, meager, little spice rack. So now, on to mixing our spice blends. Okay, so the first one that I am doing is, as I said, poultry seasoning. Now, you don't have to use this only on poultry. You can use it as a rub on chicken, turkey, etc. But you can also use it in making stuffing. You can use it in meatloaf. I mean, just because it says poultry in the name doesn't mean you can only use it for poultry. Once you see the different herbs and spices that we're using, you'll see that it's not something that's just poultry. You can use this in a variety of ways. You could use it for making breadcrumbs. So don't feel tied to using it just for what its name says. So for the poultry seasoning, we're going to need some thyme, some rosemary, some sage, some marjoram, but I seldom ever keep marjoram on hand because I don't use it that often. So in place of the marjoram, we are going to be using oregano because that is from the same family of herbs. So it's got a similar flavor, but oregano is much stronger. So in the recipe, I recommend a teaspoon and a half of marjoram but since we're using oregano, we're going to use half as much, and that's going to be three quarters of a teaspoon. We also have black pepper, and we have some nutmeg. Now, I have the actual nutmegs. I prefer doing them fresh. And so, because I'm going to be doing a bunch of different spice blends that use nutmeg, I've already ground a bunch of it here so that it's ready for me for all of the preparations and I don't have to scrape each one each time. But you could use the one in the little jar. I just prefer fresh because the flavor is more intense. So let me move you aside. Now I have my little spice blender here. It's actually a little coffee mill that I use for spices only. I don't put coffee in here. And the reason I'm using this is if you've ever seen poultry seasoning, it's usually a powdery substance and especially using rosemary, which are those hard, brittle needles, basically. I don't like using rosemary as it is. I usually grind it up, but for the seasoning, I'm actually going to pulse it in the little spice blender. I'm going to pulse it all together so we don't even need a little fork or whisk to whisk everything together because I'm going to do it all in here. So let me get this lid here. 
And we're going to need two, two tablespoons of thyme. So now this will make probably about three to four tablespoons of poultry seasoning. If you wanted to, you could cut these measurements down in half and not make as much, or even down to a quarter if you really didn't need much. But this is very versatile, much more versatile than the name suggests. So don't let the name fool you, as I've said. So that was two tablespoons of thyme. We need a tablespoon and a half of sage. Now, if you've never seen sage, the actual herb is kind of like a, almost looks like a fluffy leaf to me. Um, so the herb itself kind of has a fluffy look to it, almost like a frosted leaf kind of, because it's got a dull whiteness to it. So there's one tablespoon, and then I'm not gonna fuss around with trying to do the teaspoons. I'm just gonna do about half a these tablespoon right there. You wanna make sure you seal these up. Now I put all of mine into airtight containers, but as you saw, I have a lot. So I usually try to keep them in airtight containers, but if you don't have as many as I do, you don't have to shift them into other containers. You can just use them as they are in the little jars. Okay, so now here's where the marjoram would go in. I would use a, um, a teaspoon and a half of marjoram. But as I said, I don't use it that often. So I'm going to do just a three quarters teaspoon of oregano. And these are in bigger jars because these are the herbs and spices that I use most often in cooking. So these are ready with a little shaker and I don't have to spoon them out necessarily. So now we're going for one teaspoon of the rosemary. And it's okay if it's a little over because these needles kind of throw off measuring evenly. So I'm just doing one teaspoon of that and that's just gonna go right into the lid of my little spice grinder. I'm gonna do one teaspoon of black pepper. You could use white pepper if you prefer, which is not as pungent and spice forward as black pepper, but I like that little bit of spice that black pepper has. And lastly, we are going to do a half teaspoon of nutmeg. Now that might seem like an odd ingredient because you think of nutmeg with eggnog and Christmas and other things, but it really has a good flavor. It really does enhance anything that you're putting it with. You just have to be very sparing when you're using nutmeg because it can be overpowering. So we're just using a half teaspoon. Then I'm going to get this into my spice mix blender here. And I'm going to just pulse this a few times and I'll usually shake it as I'm going just to make sure that any of those like needles from the rosemary definitely break up. So I'm going to turn down the volume while I do this, but I'll show you it. It's very quick. Still see a few little bits of the needle. Okay. Mm. Getting a strong scent from that. But there you have poultry seasoning. Now, like I said, you can use this on poultry, of course. You can use it in stuffings to make breadcrumbs. You can use it in meatloaf. You could even use it on a steak on pork. It would be great on a pork chop. Um, so you don't have to go by the name poultry and just think that's all you can use it for. So let me set this all aside and I'll get prepared for our pumpkin pie spice.
Okay, for spice blend number two, we are doing pumpkin pie spice. Now you just need five different spices to make this. Now you can of course get the little jar in the supermarket, that is totally fine, but I prefer to make my own so that way I always have it on hand. So for pumpkin pie spice, you're going to need cinnamon, ground cloves, ginger, nutmeg, and allspice. Now I'll talk about the allspice in a moment. A lot of people may not have allspice on hand and may not want to buy any. So I have a little hack that you can replace the allspice if you don't want to get it. But I really do like having the allspice itself. So for pumpkin pie spice, now if you look at the label, any label, of any food. The most common ingredient is the first and they list them in the order of most used to least used. So on pumpkin pie spice you will see or you should see cinnamon is the first because that one you use the most of. Um, pumpkin pie spice is mostly cinnamon. So for this, because I'm making a big batch, and again, you can cut this down to half, third, quarter, um, just play around with the ratios. And I need three tablespoons because it is that time of the year. And I am making sure I have plenty on hand. Okay, so there's three tablespoons of cinnamon. You'd want one tablespoon of ginger. And this is obviously powdered ginger, ground ginger. You don't want to use fresh ginger for this. Now we need two teaspoons of nutmeg. And one and a half teaspoons of cloves. I just love the smell. The smell of cloves always makes me think of the holidays. That's three quarters. Actually, I can use two of these. I was going to go for the half teaspoon and do it three times, but I can do two three quarters to get one and a half teaspoons. And then we are going to need the same amount of allspice, ground allspice. Now, as I said, if you didn't want to go out of your way and get allspice, there is a way to manipulate the other ingredients to replace this. So if you don't want to get the allspice, what you will do is add a teaspoon of cinnamon, and this will be on the recipe on the blog. Um, you'll do a teaspoon of cinnamon, a half teaspoon of nutmeg, and a pinch of clove to replace the flavors of the allspice. It won't be exact, but it's a good approximation. So, I'm just going to mix this all together. Ugh. You know I can't do anything without making a mess, which is why Paul is always telling me, clean as you go. But do I listen? Not usually. I can't concentrate on more than one thing at a time. Okay. So there. Smells like pumpkin pie to me. We have our pumpkin pie spice. This will be very handy this season, so I definitely want that on hand. So let me clear a few things away, and we will move on to apple pie spice. Okay, now we are moving on to apple pie spice. And again, just like with pumpkin, you don't have to use these spice blends for what their name says that they are for. You can use them for other things. Apple pie spice would be great on pork. You could add a little um, sugar or sweetener to any of these except for the poultry seasoning and make like a cinnamon sugar, but in the flavor that you're choosing. So 
there are other options. So don't feel like you're stuck only making apple pie or something with apples in it. There are other ways that you can use this blend. Now this is gonna be six ingredients. The most predominant is going to be cinnamon. There's also some ground cardamom and I will discuss that in a moment. Nutmeg, allspice, ginger, and ground cloves. Now, first of all, for nutmeg, I use the whole nutmeg. And I don't know if you've ever seen any that's not in the jar, um, already ground, but this is a nutmeg. You have a little grater and you just grate whatever you need. Usually it's just a small little amount because nutmeg can be very strong. Now, if you don't have one of these, which I mean, this is a kind of a specialty thing, so you probably wouldn't. A little microplane grater would be just fine to grate that. But I do prefer using my nutmeg hole and not buying the ground stuff, which can kind of weaken the flavor. This definitely has a very strong flavor when it's freshly ground. Now a nutmeg, if you want a little backstory, is the seed from a fruit, kind of like a peach or, you know, but instead of a pit, they're calling it a seed. And you actually get two spices out of that one fruit. And I will insert a picture in a moment to show you there is the fruit, then there is the seed or the pit, which has a shell, but it also has a coating, almost like a little red web and that is another spice called mace. Now I seldom ever use mace, um, but I have on occasion. Actually, do I even have any? I do have some. I don't use it very often, as I said. It's a little more earthy than the nutmeg is. Nutmeg is more bright, kind of like if you think of eggnog, that flavor is predominantly nutmeg. So mace is like this red coating around the outside of the seed. And so they peel it off, stretch it out, let it dry, and then grind it into what you see before you here. In the nutmeg itself, they let it dry and the interior is what you find here. There's like a little coating on the outside and when it shrinks enough, you'll hear it rattle, kind of like that. And that lets them know that the nutmeg seed has pulled away from its outer shell. So that's one fruit that I know of that you get two spices from. Anyway, that is your little nutmeg tutorial, I guess. Now, another thing, the allspice, which we talked about, is a bunch of little berries. They're called allspice berries. You don't smell much from them until you've ground them. I prefer doing them freshly ground. Just because it, you know, any freshly ground spice definitely is better than something that's been sitting in the jar. So likewise, I also, I'm sure you've seen cloves before. You're probably sticking out of a ham or holding a pineapple slice into a ham, but they're like little spears almost. And these, you can definitely smell, not as much as once you grind them, but you can definitely tell that this is a clove. And again, this is a spice that I prefer to freshly grind. So I have whole cloves on hand so I can grind up my own. Okay, enough about the wonders of grinding your own spices. That is not what we're here for. Well, kind of it is, but anyway. So for the apple pie spice, which is what we're really here for. We are going to do four tablespoons of cinnamon. Now this is gonna make about a third of a cup of apple pie spice. 
And again, you don't have to be too particular about making sure it's even and getting it all over your counter. Um, like I just shake it against the sides and try to flatten it out as much as possible. But it's not, doesn't have to be like a precise science. There are many types, many recipes for all of these spices. This is just the one I prefer, but you'll find some where they use less cinnamon, a little more nutmeg, a little more whatever. So you can play around with these if you find that it's not enough cinnamon for you, too much cinnamon for you, that kind of thing. Now the second component for us is going to be our freshly ground nutmeg. It doesn't have to be freshly ground, but as I said, I prefer that. And just two teaspoons of the nutmeg. Now cardamom is a spice that a lot of people probably don't have around the house. It's not overly common. It is very distinctive. It kind of makes me feel like, I, I know this is weird, but when I walk into a health food store and there's some scent, some like natural scent, I don't know, maybe it's just the ones I've been to, but it's very kind of sweet, a little pungent, um, but this comes from a pod, and if you don't have it, I'm going to give you a um, quick fix for that. You don't have to buy this. It can be expensive, so you don't have to go out of your way if this is the only thing you're going to be using cardamom for. So what you can do, this is going to be a teaspoon and a half. So I have a three-quarter teaspoon measure here. I'm going to put two of those in. And if you do not have cardamom, you don't want to go through the expense of getting any or you're not going to use it for anything else, what you can do is replace it with three quarters of a teaspoon of cinnamon and three quarters of a teaspoon of ginger. And that will approximate the same flavor. It won't be precise, but it'll approximate it close enough. Now we're going to go in for our allspice. This is going to be one teaspoon of allspice and I really love the pungent smell of that but again if you don't want to get this you don't want to grind your own berries you don't want to buy allspice just for this one spice blend you don't have to you can approximate the allspice with three quarters of a teaspoon of cinnamon a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg and just a pinch of cloves and that will approximate, again, it won't be precise, but it'll be close enough that it's not gonna bother anything. So next we have our ginger, just a half teaspoon. Ginger is not a very dominant flavor in apple pie spice, but it does give it a nice little background note of a little spiciness. And then just a pinch of cloves. Now, if I could actually reach in and pinch, I would, but I can't, so I have my eighth teaspoon measure, and I'm just gonna do like about half of that. So just a little pinch. Um, there are some people I've seen that claim an eighth teaspoon is a pinch. I think it's a little less than that, because I don't know, unless you do a big pinch, um, but that's what I do. It's just about half of an eighth of a teaspoon. And we're just going to mix this all together. And like I said, this is mostly cinnamon because apple and cinnamon are obviously a very common pairing. But all those other flavors in there just give it a really nice warm, cozy feeling like, um, you know, grandma's apple pie, mom's apple pie, that kind of thing. It's just that feeling of, there's just a warmth to it. And it smells incredible. 
Okay, so there is your apple pie spice, as well as a few lessons on some of the spices and where they come from. And now we are going to go on to gingerbread. Okay, so now we are on to gingerbread spice mix. Um, you can use this again for other things than just making gingerbread. Gingerbread spice mix, because of the earthy flavors, be very good with pork, be very good with beef. You could do it with chicken. I mean, and it's not going to taste like gingerbread because a lot of the predominant flavor of gingerbread comes from using molasses. So just because you have the spice blend doesn't mean whatever you make with it is going to necessarily taste just like gingerbread. So for gingerbread, there is a secret little Turk ingredient in here that adds just a little bit of bite, which is perfect for gingerbread. Now we're gonna use up the rest of our nutmeg because I measured that all out when I ground it. We're gonna use some cloves some cinnamon, ginger, obviously, and that's gonna be the predominant spice in here, obviously, and some allspice, and again, I will let you know, and it will be on the recipe, how to replace that if you don't wanna get it. The surprise ingredient is some black pepper. Gingerbread has a little spicy bite to it, which a lot of it comes from the ginger, but using black pepper in this spice mix just boost that slightly and you won't even know that there's black pepper in there. You'll just be able to get a little hint of that bite and it's really, really good. So let us get into mixing this up. For the ginger, because this is gingerbread and I am going to be using this, I do have on my blog, I'm going to be doing a video for it as we get closer to the holiday season, the winter holiday season, um, for gingerbread pancakes, which are really good. Um, see, I'm just shaking these down. If you really wanted to be crazy, you could, not crazy, but if you really wanted to be overly cautious, you could like swipe down off your finger and make sure it's even. I'm not that fussy as you may know by now. Okay, so there's our ginger. We're gonna add in two tablespoons of cinnamon. A lot of times recipes will have these equal or sometimes actually have the cinnamon with more volume than the ginger, which I honestly don't get. This is gingerbread spice. So I don't know why they have the cinnamon more dominant, but that's what some recipes do. This is my take on it. And again, you can play around with it if you think there's too much ginger, too much cinnamon, whatever. You can play around with them once you've had them. Okay, we're gonna do a teaspoon of nutmeg and that was what was left in here. We're going to do a tablespoon of allspice. Now, like I said before, this does have a bit of a like cinnamon and pepper type of note to it. So that really enhances this gingerbread spice. Now, if again, you did not want to go out of your way and get allspice, that is totally fine. What you can do is replace it with two teaspoons of cinnamon, one teaspoon of nutmeg, and again, a pinch of cloves just to get that little bite. For the pepper, we are going to actually use a whole teaspoon of pepper. And like I said, you're not going to really notice that there is pepper in here, but you are going to notice a distinct extra little bite that you might not get from other gingerbread spice blends. And this is the most cloves we've used is we're doing one whole teaspoon. Because again, gingerbread has a bit of a bite to it. It has a little pungent strength that you really want. And these spices, the pepper, the cloves, 
the allspice, the ginger, they all really help to enhance that gingerbread flavor. So you're just gonna mix this together. And as you can see, I'm just mixing it with a spoon, right, the measuring spoon. You can go get a whisk, a little whisk. You could use a fork. And I know if I did that, I'd probably make less of a mess. But so far, not too bad. Okay, so that is gingery. And just what I wanted. So there we have our gingerbread spice mix. And again, if you don't want this much, if you don't think you're going to use it in time and don't want to have all this extra, cut it in half, cut it in thirds, just do a little calculating with the measurements and you'll be fine. So now we have all four spice blends. Let me clear up things here and I'll be right back to wind this down. All right, so there you have your four spice blends. We have our poultry seasoning. And again, you do not have to use it on poultry. We have our pumpkin pie spice, our apple pie spice, and our gingerbread spice. And again, play around with these things. Use them on things other than what their namesake says they're for. And you want to make sure that you are storing these like I showed you in some sort of airtight container. I have little jars with a little rubber seal on them. You can do a little shaker. You could do a little mason jar. It's up to you. Just make sure that they stay airtight so that you don't lose the aroma of the spice blends. So I hope you will use some of these blends during this upcoming holiday season. And I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. I would really appreciate that. And subscribe to the channel if you're looking for recipes to help you on a weight loss journey. Hit the notification bell for the next time I upload any sort of video. And comment down below if there is any particular spice blend that you are interested in. If there are other spice blends, because I will do some for other seasons, other times. But because we're getting halfway through October already, I wanted to make sure that our holidays were covered with spice blends. And you can also follow me over on social media. Here is my Instagram handle. And there are two Facebook groups I'm a part of. One is mine, Recipes with Roy. And the other one is Finding Our Way, W-E-I-G-H. And that one I co-admin with Jennifer Lynn from the Jennifer Lynn channel, as well as Brie Coleman from Balancing Life with Brie. So I am going to go store my spices and get ready for some fall recipes and maybe some gingerbread pancakes coming up soon. So until next time, bye.